Hello, my name is Shelby Vaughn, Pastor Full Gospel Tabernacle at 208 Washington Street in Anahuac, Texas. And I want to invite you to tune in and listen to my broadcast, Flames of Revival, on Faith Television Network. You will be the rest. Welcome to Flames of Revival broadcast. This is Shelby Warner, Pastor Full Gospel Tabernacle at 208 Washington Street in Anahuac, Texas. I'm glad you tuned in today. I praise God that we are blessed and we simply cannot be cursed. I praise God that our steps are ordered by the Lord. I praise God that the greater one, he lives on the inside. I praise God that no weapon formed against me and against you shall ever, ever prosper. And so, I want you to step up and become the champion that you already are, okay? See, a lot of times, it's, you, you, remember, you remember God sent the angel to Gideon, and they call him a mighty man of valor? <coughs> they call him a mighty man of valor, you know, because he was hiding, great stomping, all that. Who, me? Yeah, you. You're a mighty man of valor. So God could see something in him that he didn't know was there. And you see, you, you would think he would know it was there, but he didn't. <laughs> and I, I, I dare say that that's some stuff in you that you may not know is there, but I am telling you that it is there. It's in you now. The greater one live. You, he always causes me to triumph. So when I pay attention to the God of power and, and the God uh, 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 of, of the universe and I stay divinely connected, then all these things are going to work together for my good because I love the Lord. You understand? All, all these things. It didn't say they're going to be good. It didn't say they're going to feel good. It didn't say I'm going to like them. But it says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Okay? And so uh, I want to give you an acronym. I want you to start living by. I live by it. And uh, I have been for a few years now. But uh, the word win, W-I-N, W-I-N. So we are winners, right? No matter what we face, we win. We got these, and we, we do. You understand? If you, if you choose to, you will, all right? But the acronym for me is what's important now. I don't know if I made it up or I got it from somewhere. It don't matter. It's mine now. <laughs> so, but anyway, what's important now? Win. W-I-N. What's important now? So when I, when I, when I uh, 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 figure out what I'm going to do for the day, then my whole deal is, what's important now? What's important now? You know, should I cut the grass today? Oh, I mean, what's important now? Y'all understand? You know, because everybody, if you're like me, you got a thousand projects that you could do, but is that what you ought to be doing with your time at this moment in time? We're not talking about right or wrong. We're talking about, we, we, I'm talking about what's important right now. Okay, and so uh, one of the things that you need to understand is that God, uh, Oh, glory, how can I say it? God is a connector. Let, let, let me just say it like that. God is a connector. Now, uh, I want to read. Well, well, let me, I started on Joshua, so let me go there. And, uh, <laughs> man, it, it feels like somebody pouring something on me and I'm drinking something at the same time. I don't know if you ever felt that, but it's wonderful. It's like this elixir from somewhere else. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's getting in me. And at the same time, it's being poured on me while I'm talking to you. This is wonderful. Amen. All right. Joshua 1, um, when God was talking, and I want, I, want, I, want you to, I want you to listen to the words of God when, when he started talking to Joshua. Okay. When God started talking to Joshua, uh, God said, first of all, God said, Moses, my servant is dead. You know, I read that. And then he said, every place that the, that the sole of your feet shall tread, uh, it's going to be yours. And then he gave him the boundaries and all. In verse 5, he said, there, <coughs> there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. And that's the covenant promise to you and me. God can never fail, and he won't forsake you. 
Okay, you got it? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, glory to God. You watch. Okay, now watch. It says, uh, be strong and of a good courage. Now, the word courage is a French word that means uh, um, heart, heart. Strength from the heart. That's what it, that's what it, <coughs> that's what it means. <coughs> so the Bible says, be strong and of good courage. So God was telling the man to be strong and have courage. So it's going to take courage, strength from the heart to win. So when it, comes to, when it comes to learning the principles of God, is your heart in it? When it comes to preaching the gospel and reaching men who are lost, is your heart in it? When you're on the praise team, is your heart in it? When you're teaching the kids Sunday school, is your heart in it? When you're cleaning up the church or running the church or whatever you do for God, is your heart in it? When you got radio TV, uh, ministry, TV ministry, whether you edit or whether you own or whatever you do, is your heart in it? See, it's different than a man who has a heart for something and a man just doing something as a job. We're talking two different, no, no. You understand what I'm saying, right? Okay, and so God said, be strong and have good courage, strength from the heart. Be strong, courage, be strong, have strength from your heart. It says, for unto the people, now, 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 man, when I was looking at this, let me show you something. Joshua and God was having a conversation, but God was talking about the people that were with Joshua. See, that's why you need to stay with your leader and stay under them, you know, because somebody just grown up, oh, he made me mad, I'm finna go. Well, and see, I tell people this all the time. I don't care if you mad, and I don't care uh, if the preacher said something that you didn't like, and I don't care if the preacher's wrong. My question always to anybody, whenever they come tell me that, I said, did God tell you to do that? If, did God if God tell you to leave, you need to hurry up and go for real. But if God didn't, didn't, didn't free you to go and all, you know, that man could repent or whatever, but you are, you're not God. You're not the judge and the jury and the executioner. You need to stay in place because what somebody else do ain't got nothing to do with whether God told you to be there or not. See, God didn't tell you to be at a place necessarily because what the people are doing. God is telling you to be at a, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but God has got you at a place because that's where you're supposed to be. Sometimes a lesson is for you. Sometimes it ain't got nothing to do with the rest of it. And so do you trust God or uh, you so smart you don't need to listen to God and nobody else? You understand? See, see, let me tell you something. I, 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 I think that I, I like straight talk. And that's what I get. So when people come with a problem, first thing, can you take straight talk? Because if they can't take it, I don't need to talk to them because they can't handle what I say. And I'm not mean, but sometimes I get strong in what I say because, you know, I'm, I'm on your side. You understand? See, I'm training soldiers, warriors. You understand? I believe, man, I believe if the devil jump on you, I believe you ought to get him off in Jesus' name. You understand? I don't believe you need to put up with sickness. It's like, what you doing on my body? You ain't got no business over here. What you doing over here? In fact, get down there under my feet. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, no, the Bible says heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. You understand? The devil trying to discourage. What you doing, discouragement? What, you, what are you doing here? You ain't got no business trying to talk to my head. Get up out of here now in the name of, oh, ain't nobody scared of you fear? What are you doing here? You scared. I don't know what. You, you, you understand God hasn't given me the spirit of fear. See, you got to talk. That's what I do now. You talk to stuff. No, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but power love. And a sound mind. So you know what you need to do? You need to go on with that. Because ain't nobody, you know, God has not given me the spirit of fear. Because, see, fear is nothing trying to be something. And if you don't let it attach itself to you, it can't come into being. Glory. I learned that, and I know that. You understand? If you don't let fear come into being, fear can't come into being because fear is nothing. Fear is nothing. Fear is nothing trying to be something. Oh, watch this. Okay, you have two ladies, one scared of spiders and one not. Same spider, same place. They can see the same spider at the same time. Okay, so one of them scream, run, fall out, break a heel, and run out to church. Somebody else, you know, look at him, sit there and ignore him, or take a shoe off or take a fan or whatever and whatever. Same spider, but look at the reaction. This one grew up in the country. She ain't scared of no spiders. They used to, she had pet spiders. She ain't thinking about no spiders. Y'all, you hear what I'm saying. And then the other lady, because how she was raised or whatever, whatever. And now, now, same situation, but this one refused to let fear 
rule her because she's used to that. So fear is nothing trying to be something. Hallelujah. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And so when you get up, what's important now? See, I, I, I need to know that I'm going to win every day. And according to the word of God, he always calls me to triumph. So I can't take no for an answer, so I'm going to win. Whatever happened, I'm going to win. You understand? The devil come at me, I'm going to bust him down in Jesus' name because I'm going to win. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to go take over stuff. We got stuff to do. We are anointed. We are called. The hand of God is on us. We got angels taking care of us. We got the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We are called to a higher calling. We got, we're, getting, we're getting orders from another place. We, 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 we hear the voice of God. We hear that drum a beat, that drum beat. And we hear that drumming going on in the inside. You can't quit. Go forward in the name of Jesus. And to me, that's what God was telling Joshua. No, no, no. Let me tell you how to win, Joshua. He said, this book of the law, the word of God, he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So that means I got to say what God says. So if God says I'm blessed, I'm going to keep saying I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Because that's what God said. If he said, great is he that's in me, then he that's in the world. And I'm going to keep saying, great is he that's in me. Because he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of their mouth, but meditate day and night. Now, he's not talking about 12 and 12, 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night, because you could never sleep. He's talking about a lifestyle. Meditate day and night. Observe to do what's written. And he said, then you will make your own way prosperous and you will have good success. And so God wants you successful, but the way he gets you to be successful is he gives you instruction. He gives you insight and he gives you information. And if you stay connected divinely, then it's got to work. You understand? When he said, go show yourself to the priest, and as they went, they got healed, it had to work. When he told them, oh, they don't have no wine, oh, go get some water pots and take it to the governor. When they got the water pots and they put that water, they know what they put in there. But what they put in there, it turned into something else. And so you have to understand that you got Jesus the Christ, the anointing on the inside of you. And if you stay connected, then he'll flow through you. He'll work through you. You will be able to lay hands on the sick and cast out devils. What you say will start to come to pass because you heard him first. See, Jesus said, what I, what I hear the Father say, that's what I say. What I see him do, that's what I do. And so what we do, if you understand how it works, you, you walk in the anointing. You announce what is. You understand? You're not making it be. You're just announcing what is. And so you become a mouthpiece for the master. Glory to God. You are, I'm telling you right now, if God says call it, then you call it. See, and so if you spend time with God, you'll get the answer first, and then you go show up, and you let it loose. You impart it. You release it, however you want to say it. You understand? And so Moses knew, when I get to the Red Sea, and God, you know, I'm talking to God, God said, get up. Divide. I want you to divide that. What you doing? Get up. Hallelujah. You understand? So Moses had uh, held the, uh, the rod up, and all of a sudden, all that Red Sea started responding to a man who was connected divinely and who had responded to the God who made him. And so the reason he knew what to do is because God told him. And the reason it worked is because God told him. And the reason that water got up out the way, because God said so. God, it was already a command, you understand, in an invisible arena where God, where God said, hey, listen, water, when Moses stretched out that rod, you move. And then when he did, then, the, then you know the story, then the wind came. And instead of them walking across on mud, the wind came and started to blow. And then God kept the enemy away while they just relaxed and see what God was doing. See, if you heard from God, what are you worried about? Hallelujah. If God told you your best days are ahead, then your best days are ahead. If God told you no weapon formed against you will ever prosper, then no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. If God says that he going to see you through, then God going to see you through. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying? You can't quit. You got to get you got stuff to do. You understand? No, you need to go forward in the name of the Lord. Dry cry your last tear. Yo, you hear what I said? You got it? You understand? No, don't be crying. Crying about what? Nope. Stop crying. Stop. 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 <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? No. You got stuff to do. The greater one lives on the inside. And see, if you'll release the, if you'll let the power come in and you'll release it, then the power will come out. And all of a sudden, you'll turn into somebody else. Well, you, you, know, you notice how strong Samson got? Samson got strong when the spirit came on him. Huh? 
When, when, when the Spirit came on Samson, then he was strong. When the Spirit wasn't on Samson, he acted like he was just like another man. So that's telling me all I got to do is stay connected and let the Spirit of God flow on me, let the Spirit of God, you know, come on me, and then I got strength that I didn't have. Man, you understand, when you read about Samson and the strength and all, and it, look, a donkey's jawbone, a donkey's jawbone, a thousand men, I bet that thing was on automatic. The Spirit of God, took, he, he couldn't move it. You understand his energy? I think God just took it. Okay, hold on, hold on. Glued his hand to it and, and spoke to it, and then it just went to hit. I think it was hitting him all behind his back, sideways, all up under the leg, or however. You, you understand? But I know one thing. He killed a thousand of them. And then, and then, listen, see, he was connected. And then he took the jawbone that he had. Cause now I'm thirsty now. I'm thirsty. You understand? Threw it down and some cool water. What? No, that's the kind of God we have. You understand? He was in fellowship with God. And see, even when you look at that situation, it's evident to me that Delilah, she ain't understand. We know we betray he betrayed her, and he kept on talking about her hair. You know, I mean, he kept talking about his hair. He shouldn't have told her. But he kept talking about her hair and all of that. Y'all know the story. He just kept talking about it. He was talking about his hair. But, you know, he was getting close. But he hadn't told her at first. And then finally, he told her what would it take for him to be weak like another man. Now, God never told him to do that because the God didn't want him blind and dead. But he opened his mouth. You understand? You can't tell everything. You're not supposed to tell everything. I don't care what nobody say. Who told you you're supposed to tell everything? The Bible said don't let your right hand know what your left hand do. And I ain't talking about keeping sick. You know what I'm talking about. There's some information that people can't handle. They're not supposed to hear. I know one thing, if he wouldn't have never told her, he wouldn't have never got that haircut. I know that. You understand? So you tell me, was it the will of God that he tell her? And maybe he should have shut up. You understand what I'm saying? And see, then he was blind because every time he told her something about his hair, that's what she done. Some new plaid, some new this, that. And he just, you know, you understand, you understand what I'm saying. Hmm. Glory. And see, what had happened was, she had already set him up to lose. I did a study on this. She got with the, the, the other guy, though, I think it was five kings. But anyway, according to the money in that time and all that, the money, according to this commentary that I read, said that they gave her $89,500. That's how much all of them together gave uh, Delilah to betray Samson. You understand? And then, you know, he, they put his eyes out. And when they put his eyes out, his ministry was over. And the devil trying to blind you to who you are because he knows that if you get out of faith and you get uh, disconnected, that you don't have the power to stay and become and be everything you're supposed to do, be. And so the devil is trying to break your focus. You understand what I'm saying? No, no, no. And, and so I was, <laughs> and I told, I, I'll give him the credit this time, but after this is mine, I was talking to my boy, and uh, we was talking about this, and he said, Man, and see, <laughs> it was funny, though, the way he said it. He said, man, Delilah was married to Samson. She didn't understand. He said, now, nah, uh, nah, he killing all, he got God with him. He's anointed, and he got the long hair and all. And, and once he told her, see, she still had a choice. Once, this is what he was telling me, that's what he was saying. He said, she still had a choice while he was telling her that. Just because he told her, she didn't have to cut his hair. She didn't have to rip him off, rip, you know, uh, uh, destroy his strength by, by causing him to break covenant, his divine connection. He said, no, nah, if she was the right one and was paying attention, she got to understand, well, I'm married to him. He's already rich. He's anointed. God is with him because she saw God with him. Everybody knew God was with Samson. Everybody knew. So why you want to leave God with him? So why I'm going to back up? No, God is with him. He said, Man, if she'd understood right, <laughs> he said, you know what she should have done? I said, what's that? He said, man, she should have got a do-rag, some activator, some curl gel, and just took care of that. We don't, and she told have told him, Samson, I don't want one string in your hair to, 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 to break off. We don't want no, 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 no uh, brittle ends, and we don't want no, you know, we don't want your hair to break off. He said, man, she should have been rubbing that stuff in there and wrapping it up. Oh, no, we ain't losing no hair because that's your anointing. <laughs> he said, no, she should have took care of that head, took care of it because that was taking care of her. And see, 
And so, and then we start talking about the covenant. But the bottom line is this. See, when you're in covenant, you are being taken care of. The moment you break covenant, you start the grim reaper in motion at your house. And just because don't nothing happen to you today or next week or next month, that don't mean that everything is all right. People think, you know, that, well, you know what, well, God ain't done nothing yet. It ain't nothing happened to me yet. They don't have a clue. And I'm going to tell you something else just for the record. You don't have to fight nobody. You don't fight people. You stay connected, and the God that you have, he, 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 he will take care of you. So I think you need to put faith in what Jesus already did. See, Jesus already died on the cross. Jesus already paid the price. So I think that, I think that you ought to put faith in what he did. It says, by his stripes, you are healed. So I need to put, he already took the stripes. So I think you ought to put faith in the fact that, oh, no, by his stripes I'm healed. Okay, well, if I'm healed, I'm healed. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? See, you stay connected by believing the word. You stay connected by calling those things that be not. The, God said, God, God, God told Joshua. He said, you need to say something. You need to talk. This book of the law, that's what it means, shall not depart out of thy mouth. But you need to meditate day and night, observe to do what's written. Then you're going to have, or observe to do what's written. What's written? What's written? Call those things that be not as though they were. That's written. What's written? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. What you need to do. What's written? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's what's written. Let the weak say I'm strong. That's what's written. Jesus said, you know why you don't have it? Because you won't talk. You won't ask nothing. So a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you need to go by what's written. Put faith in the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So I need to put faith in the word of God. I need to put faith in what Jesus already did. I need to put faith in the finished work. When Jesus said it was finished, it was finished. Hallelujah. And so what happens is all needs are met, and what we do is we tap in to what's done. When I learned how to obey God, I understood that that was a doorway coming from eternity and into eternity for Shelby. And so when I obeyed, then God would move. And you will find out that whenever you obey God, then he moves. You understand? Then you start finding out what's in the covenant. You're divinely connected. You got it. You're divinely connected. And so you'll find out as you stay connected that the stuff that don't belong there don't belong there, if that makes sense. What, 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 what's, what don't belong there don't belong there. Uh, you know what? The devil is an outlaw. That's what he is. He's outside the law of God. He do stuff outside the law of God. Sickness is an outlaw. Disease is a despair. You understand? Lies and, 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 and doubt and fear and unbelief. All these things are an outlaw. They are outside the law of God. The Bible says we need to meditate on the word then. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. You know, because uh, I say sometimes I have, to, I have to get strong with people, and then they, they understand. Even if they don't talk to me no more, I'm not mad at them. But I want them to understand. You know, I don't let people defend sickness. If I'm trying to help them, if they call me and they talk to me or they want to know or whatever and we have a conversation about being healthy and all of that, and then I'm telling them and, uh, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then they try to defend sickness, like sickness got the right. Well, no, I have to check them in. It's like, oh, no, 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 wait, wait, why are you trying to defend sickness? You say you want to get well. And then, you, you know, you're talking about, well, everybody gets sick. Everybody going to die or something. Well, hold up. Well, you don't need to talk to me. You don't need to talk, talk to somebody else, you know, that's going to agree with you. Why are you, why you defending being sick? Why, 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 why do people defend being broke? And then they work in two jobs and always complaining about I ain't got no money. Why do, they, why do they try to talk against prosperity? I don't believe that prosperity gospel. Well, Jesus did. God did. I wish above all things you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. God gave us power, Deuteronomy 8, 18, to get wealth, to establish his covenant. Send prosperity now. God has pleasure in the prosperity of his saints. Wealth and riches shall be in my heart. These are all scriptures. These are all words. So God don't have no trouble with prosperity. 
And so you got people on the one hand, they, they double-minded. And the Bible says double-minded man is unstable in all his way. And so on the one hand, they fight it, and on the next hand, they want it. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't believe in that name because I don't believe. I sure would like a new truck, but I'm tired of this thing breaking down. Okay, which one do you want? Double-minded man, unstable in all his way. That's what God said. And see, when you start getting two minds, you disconnect. These preachers that kill themselves, the ones I told you I studied, well, one guy, his whole deal was when the, uh, what they call it, the, the uh, hacker hacked into Ashley Madison, he had this big church family and all of that, and he just assumed that they was going to find out about him because the threat was they're going to release all them secret doc, all them secret connections that all these bad people having sex and all that. They was going to release it to the world, which they never did, but he thought so. Got it? And that kept eating on him. And the devil put that in his mind. Well, he put it in his mind to do it first. But then after that, he put that in his mind like, okay, boy, if they're going to catch anybody, your name coming out front. And that fear of what was going to happen, he thought, that never happened. That fear caused him to write a suicide note and go kill himself. And that's what he did. Now, now watch this. He could have made another choice. But the choice that he made with suicide, he came in covenant with suicide. And he stayed in covenant with suicide, and he followed through on a covenant that he had with suicide, and he killed himself. Same thing with the other two preachers, too. Do you understand what I'm saying? They came in covenant with suicide. So they couldn't get rid of suicide because they were in covenant with it. Don't you understand? You, if, if you're in covenant with being poor, you can't get rid of poverty. If you're in covenant with being sick, you can't get rid of sickness. If, if, if you're in covenant with being depressed, you're going to stay depressed until you get out of covenant. Go, is that making sense? As long as, you, as long as you're in covenant with mess, you're going to have mess. As long as you're in covenant with fear and doubt and unbelief, you're going to stay in covenant with fear, doubt, and unbelief. Break the covenant in Jesus' name. Okay. Listen, <laughs> this is Shelby Vaughn. I'm so glad you tuned in today. I got some more to talk to you about, so you need to come back. God bless you. you have a wonderful day. We'll talk again. I'll see you next time on the air. Bye. Ow! Ow! Welcome to Flames of Revival Broadcast. This is Shelby Warner. I'm Pastor Full Gospel Tabernacle in Anahuac, Texas. And I want to give you a personal invitation. Uh, if you're ever in the Anahuac area, you need to come visit. We have our regular service at uh, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And uh, on Wednesday is our Bible study night at 7 o'clock. All right? And uh, we pray for the sick. If that's what you need, come on. You are welcome. This is my personal invitation to you. Also, you can tune in the Faith Television Network. I'm on at 7.30 in the morning and 7.30 at night. And uh, I think I can teach you some things. The name of the broadcast is Flames of Revival. And I'll be looking to see you there. Can I testify?